So first of all, I think one of the things that we love about you guys, when you hear, we hear you guys are coming, we get all excited, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just because we love to listen to you, because we do, but obviously it's your humility and your heart and mm -hmm. the fact that you guys are real and that I'm, I'm just right here, I'm not like even really nervous because I'm just chatting with you guys. Because yeah, I feel like yeah. I know you, right? I feel like your yeah, family because so you good. come here all the time. And we look alike. <laughs> we, we, we look we alike, right? I, I just found out recently I'm 8% Italian. Oh, I'm nice. not just Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I thought that was exciting. Yeah. Um, but so, and I know one of the girls out there asked you a question, but because people are saying, oh, you guys sound so great. Mm -hmm. Oh, you harmonize so lovely. And you guys are so awesome. Um, how do you deal with moments of um, pride and fleshliness? And how do you like keep it real and humble? And sometimes do you guys within the family have to keep each other humble? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We yeah. beat each other down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think um, Terry, well, because we are family, right? Mm -hmm. Same mom, same dad. Uh, we grew up with a, a dad who was a disciplinarian. And um, so with, with the issue of, of pride, it is something, and I'm just speaking for myself, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, like Paul said, you know, you're dealing with these things daily. Mm -hmm. uh, with what we do, you know, there's, there's this, this exhilarating feeling when you uh, leave the stage after an hour and a half set. And so it's trying to figure out that balance of feeling excited, you know, that we connected with the audience, and then also making sure that we uh, we deal with with that pride issue, the the the, the flesh issue, and, and so I think that number one, you know, the basics. It just comes with really having a a relationship, right? To be able to discern, uh, and the fact that we are brothers, we literally have access to each other, the freedom to say, hey, you know, let's uh, let's 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 make sure that that uh, we're we're staying balanced. And um, the, the accountability factor, there's a lot of artists and bands that's not in place. And thankfully for us, because we've learned from our mistakes in the past, that that's something that we have in this unit. Yeah, we'll just say, man, I saw you during the second song, you were fleshing out, man. <laughs> 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 I, I think out, another, um, another right. unique uh, way to, to come against that is something that we've, uh, hopefully we've, we've gotten better at doing um, through the years and it's complimenting each other and and just saying man Joe you that word you gave was powerful and so it, it really takes the attention off of yourself and just you know you give another brother just a compliment on um, maybe something that you observed during the set or during the show because um, sometimes when you're doing this together as brothers as family that's that's not um, an exercise that's, that's normal or it mm -hmm. comes organically. And so I think for us, uh, I, I don't know if, if you guys would agree, for me, man, I, I, I really try to just, just think of, you know, maybe something Jesse said or maybe an amazing riff that he did. said, man, that, that, that was amazing. Yeah. And so it, it, helps, it helps me, um, <clears throat> you know, put whatever my thoughts are about myself in check and um, I can then you know, pay a compliment to somebody else. Nice. Do you guys remember growing up, and maybe it's a different memory or a different point in time for each of you, but when did you guys kind of realize, come to the realization, hey, we can sing and kind of can harmonize. We mm -hmm. kind of sound pretty good when we sing together. Like, when did yeah. that happen? Was it growing up at home? Was it when you guys were mm -hmm. home bored or trying to keep yourself busy? Or did you take a music class at some point? For me, it was uh, early. It was early. Uh, our older brother, Dave, uh, he was six. No, 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 he was like seven or eight and I was six and then Joe was four. And so there was just three of us before these guys were born. Dad was a musician, so taught us harmonies. And uh, so we, our, the first song we sang was, Oh How I Love Jesus. And every time um, family would, would come to our house to visit, you know, dad would go, boys, come down here, sing them a song. <laughs> and so we would, we would sing this song and we'd see uh, people's faces light up and uh, man it got my adrenaline going I go wow this is I want to do this more and so you know dad kept teaching us new songs and uh, um, that's that's when it happened for me yeah I, I think for me my first love and interest was sports but even above that was just doing something together and because it was music our dad laid the foundation that it was gonna be music it didn't matter to me if I was 100% in it, 
I was in it because we were together. And throughout the process, I began to fall in love and develop that same same mm -hmm. passion as time grew on. So, yeah, it, it kind of came natural, I guess. Was it hard? Did anybody have to learn how to harmonize, or did it just... The vocals, that... I think, I mean, pretty yeah. man, I, I think it's in... Uh, maybe in, in the DNA, our dad comes from a long uh, line of, of musicians and singers, and so, and then our culture. Um, mm -hmm. When you go to a church or any gathering mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the South Pacific, but for us in American Samoa, there's a lot of music and, and a lot without instrumentation, and so when you hear the, the, the vocals, man, everybody just falls into their parts. Three-part harmonies. Three-part harmonies. Yeah. And so I think it's, uh, somewhat inherited just through our genes. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I want to ask you guys a parent question real quick because one of you mentioned last night uh, not believing in Satan or not realizing Satan. Was real, so you had kids. And uh, I have a teenager, so I was like, <laughs> right? It's like, relate. I know Jesus is real. I feel like what I'm learning now is that Satan is real. Like, if I didn't believe that now, I know it now. With all the challenges that parents have today raising kids in a world that uses every distraction from, oh, you want to be a girl and you're a boy, you want to yep, be a boy yep, and you're a girl, sure, and yep. all the other dark and, and yep. icky things that we're seeing. Um, what encouragement can you give? I feel like a lot of Christian parents right now whose kids were raised in the church, they know sure. the truth, mm -hmm. but they're seeing their kids get distracted by things they never would have dreamed they were mm -hmm. going to have to deal mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. What encouragement can you give to parents so who are good. raising kids nowadays, or maybe are seeing their teenagers try, or preteens, or 20-year-olds, go off and try stuff that is not in God's will for them. What, how can you encourage parents to, to not be discouraged and to be hopeful and to pray and to trust? Yeah, just what you said, trust. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord, um, pray, and don't give up loving. Love your kids. I remember when my oldest son was in high school and you know grew up in church and found out that he was doing something that I never imagined. Like, my son? That's not my son. And I remember going to pray up to the altar to, and have an elder pray for me and my wife. And he just, he said, what's wrong? And we said, my son, he's 16. And, he's, and he said, let me, let me give you a little wisdom. He said, talk to God more about your kids than you talk to your kids about God. Your kids know, they know the truth. And we have kids, we have 19 kids. <laughs> and I'm not gonna speak on behalf of their kids, but I'll <clears throat> speak on behalf of my two sons who are 25 and 22 and they're still on their journey but they both love Jesus and there were times in high school where they both questioned is there a God and uh, all of our kids journey is different but I, I just want to encourage parents especially believing parents don't give up on your kids our mom who passed away of cancer I mean when she was 50 one thing we knew is she prayed and prayed and prayed and God is still answering her prayers today. So, yeah, our kids are faced with challenges we've never faced. But guess what? God is still God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's the God of the mountain. He's the God of the valley. He's the God of the 50s. He's the God of the 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, who he is will never change. And, and I'll end with this. He loves your kids more than you love them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good, y'all. Okay, I'm done. Uh, you Can guys I, have any I, other add, add something to yeah, that, Terry? Yeah, um, yes, please. One thing that, so, so our daughters, are, uh, our youngest one is 23, and so, you know, obviously our, our relationship with them as young adults is different from, from when they lived with us. One of the things that we've learned, is, and, and it's still a journey, God's helping us to get stronger in this area, is to embrace um, open-ended conversations. Mm -hmm. Like you're talking about something and, uh, and I go back and forth with my daughters and, um, and finally I, I learned to go, you know what, we're, we're probably not gonna come to an agreement here, but I love that we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so good. because that dialogue continues, you know, and because we grew up and, 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 and I feel like as men, we want to fix things right, right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, get to the altar right now, mm -hmm. repent. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I, I feel like we're embracing, um, just not having to come across as the dad who has all the answers or the mom who has all the answers. Yeah. We just keep it open-ended and that way, 
the dialogue will continue because I, I feel like as parents, ultimately that's what we want. We want connection to our kids. So, so I just wanted to add that little Thank thing. Thank you. Thank you for that.